part of that for me is because I do view the fetus as morally relevant. Because again, if I did not, the bodily rights argument would be more than enough. You wouldn't even need it, right? If you were just talking about some nondescript, irrelevant entity, I don't think we'd even need to be talking about this at all. But in my opinion, the fetus is morally relevant, so now I'm going to talk about why. First, I want to talk about how it doesn't sound like anyone is disagreeing about this in this situation, but I've had a lot of arguments about it before. The idea that the human zygote, embryo, fetus, those are all life stages of a human life cycle. I'm not talking about philosophically when is life meaningful. I'm just saying like a biological life cycle for a human starts with the zygote. So here's a sample quote from this book, Developmental Biology by Scott Gilbert. They're talking about mammalian, mammals in general, not just humans. And he says, when we consider a dog, for instance, picture an adult. But the dog is a dog from the moment of fertilization of a dog egg by a dog sperm. It remains a dog even as a senescent dying hound. Therefore, the dog is actually the entire life cycle of the animal from fertilization through death. And this is just one quote, but and these are all listed in the sources if you want to check them out. But there are countless embryology and biology textbooks, all of these stating pretty clearly that the mammalian life cycle or more specifically the human life cycle begins with a zygote. It's, a, it's an important distinction to make because it's not the same as human skin cells or your sperm cells or a woman's egg. I hear stuff like this all the time when you're talking about any cell that happens to have human DNA in it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a human organism at any stage of its life cycle. And that is not what a sperm cell is. Sperm cells are gangs. People say, oh, if abortion is, if abortion is murder, then is masturbation genocide. No! Because you're not talking about human organisms, and I so don't care about masturbation. <laughs> so I also wanted to say very quickly that outside of the abortion debate, which, as, as we've said, is very polarized and very contentious, when we step outside of that and we're just talking about biology generally, this is not considered a controversial assertion. This is not an anti-abortion belief we're trying to impose on everyone. It's a, it's a pretty readily available biological fact. I'm going to very quickly go through some examples. This is my daughter's. ABCs of Science book, which someone gave us as a gag gift, and I was amused when I noticed that Z is for zygote, the first stage of development in living things. This is a quote from, uh, if you, side note, if you guys haven't already checked this out, the YouTube channel Crash Course is excellent. If you just want to feel intellectually stimulated for five minutes and then move on, or if you need a primer on a topic you don't have time to take a whole class on, great YouTube series. Anyway, this one is for biology, it's for the one on meiosis, and the speaker, Hank Green, says, if you're not suitably impressed by the fact that we all come from one single cell, and then we become this, then psh, I, I just don't know how to do this. This is a picture I took last year in Chicago at the Museum of Science and Industry, which has an entire, like, it's sort of a body works type display of, of different uh, human systems, and they have a section that's just for fetal development, and outside of that se section they have this plaque that says, all of us start as a single cell and they begin a wondrous journey of change in with our moms. And I put all these up here to illustrate that this isn't me because I'm against abortion trying to make this the reality. This is the reality and I'm just observing it. Again, not in terms of philosophy, not in terms of when life is meaningful or as maybe religious people would put it when you have a soul or something. Just in terms of your biological life cycle, it starts with the zygote and not before that. Now, I was gonna go through these common objections which is funny because I actually had a slide on here about 20 and I took it out because it was too long. But anyway, um, I'll just very quickly go through these other ones. Molar pregnancies, as Dr. Potts talked about, um, they're actually exactly what you talked about where it, it's the result of normal human sexual intercourse and it, it results in a growth, but it's not the same thing as a human organism and, and we destroy it. And so there's two kinds, and I'm being kind of redundant now because we already talked about it, but there's the complete hydrogenoform mole, which, as he said, is um, there's a fertilization event, but instead of the normal fertilization event where you get a sperm with 23 chromosomes, an egg with 23 chromosomes, they combine and you get 46, ideally. In this case, you have an egg with not no chromosomes in it. It's just the sperm, and there's no embryo. The fetus is entirely missing. Um, the Gilbert book describes it as a human tumor. And it, I don't consider this an ethically complicated situation at all. There's no other organism involved, and it's dangerous. You should definitely destroy it. And then the more interesting and complicated, in my opinion, situation is the partial hydrogen mole, which is when you have an egg that does have DNA and it's fertilized by two sperm. And so instead of getting 46 chromosomes, you get 69. And as Dr. Potts talked about, even having one extra chromosome is often fatal. 
a lot of times humans with one extra chromosome don't even make it to birth. So imagine how kind of amazing it is that you can have humans with 23 extra chromosomes and some of them survive, not for long. But when they do, it's so remarkable that they publish papers on it because it's that difficult to do. These are listed in the sources if you want to look. They have pictures which you may or may not think are graphic. Um, but when you look at those pictures, you can see that you have a human infant with some serious genetic issues, uh, but a human infant nonetheless. So in my opinion, the idea that the zygote is the first stage of our biological life isn't contradicted by this information. Although I totally agree that biology is messy and there's lots of outlier cases and problems, these being some of them. I just don't think it contradicts the idea that our life cycle starts with the zygote, is my point. And the other one, similar to what Dr. Potts was talking about, is how frequently we have miscarriage. It's actually the statue point are even higher than the one that I had. Um, but the idea that a huge number of zygotes never implanted in the uterine lining and just pass through, right? People bring that up a lot when I talk about how the zygote is the beginning of our life cycle. And this is true. I just don't know how it negates what I've said, because the idea that an organism dies very, very easily doesn't negate the fact that it's a human organism. So for example, as a corollary, it wasn't that long ago historically that children up until the age of five also died pretty frequently. The uh, child mortality rate was huge. And so this, this is not from anything, it's just a drawing I made to show you what I mean. If this is the human life cycle and this is our survival rate, zygotes are way down, die super Right? And up until recently in history, so did very young children. And even to this day, so do very elderly people. That's all true, but I don't think that speaks to our worth at any given point. We don't argue that because some, at certain life stages, were especially vulnerable, we therefore aren't important. And we definitely don't argue that at certain life stages, because it's easier for us to die naturally, it's okay to kill us on purpose. I think that's an important distinction. 